I want to get on to the IPCC report. This is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report that was out this week. It was called a Code Red on Climate Change, and it predicts the planet will warm by 1.5 degrees within 12 years. Jason, you're now calling on the Prime Minister to update the government's 2030 emissions reduction target before the next election. This is something Scott Morrison will continue to resist, isn't it? Well, Shari, you know, it goes to my point that the Liberal Party is great at policy outcomes and we are so often miserable at political outcomes. At the moment, under our modelling, we will exceed our 2030 target by about 400 million tonnes of CO2, yet we will not take credit for it. Um, John Howard made this mistake in 2007 where Australia was actually ahead of its Kyoto protocols and he refused to sign the agreement and got punished at the ballot box because of his refusal to sign something that we were meeting and beating at the time. It just seems to me logical, sensible and, frankly, good politics for us to recognise what we're already doing, which is we're ahead of these targets. And when you look at our projections from 2008 to, to, to um but, but, year, Jason, there what isn't we a see current is... Target, but, Jason, there isn't a current target, so that's not something that your party's already doing? Sorry. Uh, well, no, no. Um, under the Paris Agreement, we have agreed to reduce our carbon emissions by 26 to 28% by 2030. We, at the moment, on our projections and our forecasts... And, by the way, Shari, compared to the rest of the world, we have one of the most accurate accountings of greenhouse gas emissions anywhere on the planet. We get no credit for that either. As, as a political party. We okay. will be just to be clear, just to clarify just sure. to clarify this here, Jason Falinski, because you are uh, from you know the, the moderate um, arm of the Liberal Party. I know you like to call it the modern liberals. Modern, you had a rebranding right. but you're the <laughs> but you are the moderate or, or left faction of the Liberal Party. So just to be clear, very quickly before I get Joel's point of view, you are now pushing for the Prime Minister to adopt a target of net zero emissions by twenty fifty. Oh, yes, that's... We are, yes. Yeah, OK. Um, Joel, would you like to respond to what Jason has said there? I mean, in total, there's 130 countries who've committed to a target of net zero by 2050. Do you think Australia should commit to this as well? Shari, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but can I also make the point <laughs> that all the states, all the territories, you know, 190 of the 200 top ASX companies... In Australia, have also committed to net zero by 2020. Well, well, Sorry, well, well Jason, up. I just have to point out to you that good. half of your party doesn't agree with you and, and neither does the Nationals. But let's hear from Joel. No it's good to see, Shari, <laughs> that um, climate change is causing more division in the coalition parties these days <laughs> than it is in the Labor Party, because the, La the Labor Party has a settled position on this. Uh, we are committed to net zero emissions by 2050. And if it's true that we are going to meet and beat our 2030 target, as the Prime Minister constantly claims, then we can afford to be a little more ambitious. Why? Because we have a strong history, both in innovation and technology. But we need to remember, I think, at least four key points. Uh, first of all, if we're going to go down this path of greater ambition, we have to embrace all the opportunities, not just renewable energy, as important that, as that is, but low emission technologies, uh, Shari, including carbon capture and storage and blue uh, blue hydrogen, for example, the list is very long. Uh, second, we, we have to accept that our coal-fired generators have to stay in, or should stay in the system to the end of their physical and economic lives. In the case of the Dell, that's two years. In the case of the, the youngest in Queensland, uh, it's 2050. But they are critical to keeping the system stable and indeed getting more renewables into the system. Uh, third, we need to continue to export both coal and gas, because that's helping developing nations, Shari, bring their emissions down. And four, but very importantly, we more, need more focus on technologies that absorb more carbon out of the atmosphere. Soil health, soil carbon, the government's been talking about it for years, but it's done very little about okay. it. And forestry, forestry, Shari. You know, the, 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 the government promised a billion new trees in the plantation estate in 2018. At the current rate, we will get there in 300 years. Yes, yeah, Shari, plant trees, create jobs, stop importing timber and use those, those plantations to absorb very large amounts of so, carbon out of the atmosphere. OK. Joel, sounds like you have a platform to challenge Elbow as leader. Joel Fitzgibbon, yeah, yeah. Jason Falinski, <laughs> thank you very much for your time.
Thanks, Thanks Harry. Thanks, Harry.